Welcome to Crawford Technologies AFP Recordings. My name is Laurie Child and I'll be your guide through these presentations. This introduction to advanced functional presentation webinar is the first in a series to accompany a set of blogs we are publishing on the history, structure and the use of AFP within the high volume archive electronic communications and printing industries. Advanced Functional Presentation, fortunately well known by its three letter acronym AFP, was launched by IBM in 1984 in a world of line printers and monospace fonts, i.e. fast typewriters. The 240 dots per inch resolution and multiple font sizes that AFP introduced was revolutionary. The first IBM PC was only developed in 1981. So this was a world still dominated by mainframe processing and channel attached in-house printers. Financial, utility and governance sectors, all high volume transactional printers rushed to adopt this new standard. For the next 20 years, IBM evolved AFP, adding support for multiple printer resolutions, cut sheet and continuous printers from IBM and other manufacturers. Support for Adobe Type 1, TrueType and OpenType fonts was added. The architecture also became available on the newer off-mainframe platforms such as AS400, Windows and AIX. All these enhancements were meticulously documented in a series of object content architecture reference documents, OCAS. In 2006, following successful collaboration on the color management open architecture, IBM invited printer manufacturers and document software companies to form the AFP consortium to support and build the AFP standard as an open architecture. In 2009, this was formally recognized and the AFP consortium became a formal open standards body responsible for the promotion and development of the AFP specifications. Now, more than 30 years after its launch, the development continues. In 2015, the AFP archive standard was adopted as ISO standard 18565, guaranteeing the preservation of AFP archives into the future. Indeed, this month, the presentation object subsets for AFP standard was updated to version 3 to include support for scalar vector graphics, SVG. For more information on the members and work of the AFP, please head over to their website, afpcinc.com org where you'll find the AFP standard documents. There are over 2,000 pages covering every aspect of AFP. The time when AFP considered an IBM proprietary technology is long gone. AFP is very much a mix and match architecture with many tools and devices connect, creating or consuming AFP files. It's quite possible and indeed common to have a full AFP environment and no IBM equipment or software. The published standards enable integration and the object-based architecture enables applications to focus on the particular elements that they are interested in. For example, a metadata indexing tool need only understand how to interpret the, the tag logical elements and simply implement the presentation text elements in sufficient detail to just skip over these objects while parsing the file. As we will see, the hierarchical nature of the file enables, enables an easy understanding of what data is on what page in what document. AFP is device independent and high performing. It needs to be as it's used to generate millions of documents a day. The supported printer control language, IPDS, provides for a bi-directional conversation between the print server and the printer. This enables sophisticated error recovery and all the dots and all the pages are printed as is expected. Integrity is inbuilt. I won't say that integrity is guaranteed because AFP is a sophisticated architecture and supports a wealth of options, including turning off printer error handling. Although physical print volumes are declining, there is still a need to communicate transactional information in a business to customer environment. Document or more accurately communication compositions systems still, still create millions and millions of pages on an AFP daily basis. It's just not all printed. The data is sent to a print spooler as an AFPDS print stream and from there it is sent on to the print server and the, print, and the printers. This is the full advanced functional presentation AFP architecture. Obviously, as alluded to earlier, the AFP 
DS print streams converted to other formats, including PDF, uh, archiving, or sometimes it's just stored straight into an archive without any print or use at all. This archive is then presented to a customer as a mobile or portal application and, and repurposed on demand. Following this trend, the term AFP now tends to be used to return to the file format as well as the full architecture. Not all AFP is created, created pristine from a data file. It can be transformed from other printer format languages such as PCL, PostScript and Metacode. By transforming the output, the functionality of the AFP and archiving architecture can be leveraged by, this, by these other output languages. Remember those fast typewriter printers? Well, they've gone on to be replaced by full color, high resolution ink, inkjet printers or laser printers. But the reports that they used to print is st are still created and still form an integral part of the business processes. Except now this line data is just archived for presentation or data mining rather than being printed and read. So in summary, we've heard how AFP is a great open architecture and very easy to work with. This also means that with a little knowledge of the file format and the reference books, it is possible to work out when something is not to standard or at least not to your understanding of the standard or accepted practices. And we will now dive into AFP in a little bit more detail as an example. So an FP print format stream fully describes the output and contains, or at least references, all the references required to print, transform, index, or archive the file. Tools are available to dissect and interpret the FP. And I've got an example of the tool up here. Notice on the left-hand side, all the font resources are embedded within the file. This is ideal for interchanging files between systems, but does lead to larger file sizes. Resources can also be referenced externally, but must be available when the file is processed either by a printer or another program. On the right hand side, I would draw your attention to the TLE, the tagological element. This is a document or page level piece of metadata that can be used for indexing. With a good specification for the metadata, there is no need to process the text unless you wish to implement full text searching, at which point consideration should be given to converting the AFP to text. The basic construction of an AFP print string is an encapsulating format. Rather than using the start and end of the file to mark the beginning and end of the AFP stream, the 2011 edition, the ninth of the mixed object document contact architecture, introduced the begin print file and end print file object as part of the AFP interchange standards. This is an example of the ongoing standards enhancement to, to reflect the newer use cases for AFP. It's no longer just used for printing documents. At the head of a print stream is a resource group that contains the majority of the resources used within the files. For example, fonts and logos that are used on every page. Not all resources need to be restored in this resource group as others exist at page levels. So for example, many image objects are stored at the page level resource group as they are only stored once within each page. Technically, AFP supports a number of different resource groups that serve different purposes and apply at different points within the file and have their own name. Following the resource group, we have the documents within the file. Note that AFP, unlike PDF for example, supports the document construction as standard. Clearly the file can contain multiple documents and remember how the metadata can, was associated at the beginning of the file, it can be associated at the document and the page level. It's at the page level where we find additional, additional resources and layouts and instructions within environment groups and page segments and overlays. It's also at the page level where all the drawing commands are placed. Drawing commands include the placement of text, position of graphic objects, barcodes, additional documents, types, and for example, embedding a PDF file, and anything else that appears on the paper or within the file. Note, it's completely possible to generate an AFP file that is in fact simply just a PDF wrapper and hides a PDF document within it. So you think you're printing an AFP file, you are, but all the content is coming from your PDF file that is embedded.
99% of the time, in fact probably 99.9% .9 of the time, an AFP file conforms to the standard and IBM conventions. However, it is possible for applications to create perfectly valid AFP files that print but are very difficult to convert to another format or extract data from. Remember how that AFP file could just be a container for a PDF file? Well that PDF file may just in turn contain scanned TIFF images from a scanner. And these types of AFP files exist and are classed as AFP files. It is also perfectly possible to create invalid AFP files that can still be printed or can still be processed because the area where the fault is is not critical until you come across to process that particular part of the AFP file. By way of an example, we will consider interpreting and printing a character within AFP. The lowercase w, EBSTIC value 166, remember this is an IBM world, so it's EBSTIC, not ASTIC, has a code point value of hexadecimal A6. This value is looked up in a code page file to find the instructions for printing the character, its glyph ID. Using code page 285, for example, this maps A6 to the glyph identifier LW01000. This glyph identifier is then looked up in the font file and the character printing instructions retrieved. This could either be in raster, which is dots, or outline, which is a, a splines format. This depends upon the font being used and they have pro each has their advantages and disadvantages. Now there's a missing step. The association of the code page within the font file is through an index and this is known as a coded font file. It's very important to note that the name and style of the font is never mentioned in any of this. There is no Arial, 12 point, bold, italic or anything like that. It is perfectly possible to create dynamic fonts that have different characteristics for each letter and allocate the characters in the order in which they are used. A cast in order of appearance approach. Some document composition products use this technique as a means of minimizing file sizes. This is valid AFP and will print but it does make converting and repurposing the AFP very difficult. So as a takeaway, I would ask you to consider all the usages for your AFP file during the design and composition stages, not just the printed output. These days, that printed output is likely to be your lowest volume use case for the AFP. Thank you for viewing this recording. I trust that you found it useful and would encourage you to read our, our blogs and our other articles on this subject. Thank you very much.